So you're trying to decide if you want to get a mechatronics engineering degree, but you need a bit more information. More specifically, what are my job prospects after I get the degree? Should I pursue a master's or a PhD? And what are the other options out there for a mechatronics engineer? Most importantly, how much money will I make? And what is the most amount of money that I can make as a mechatronics engineer? Today, I'm gonna to be answering all of these commonly asked questions and so much more. If you like this type of content and you wanna see more, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll be making a new video every week in 2021. Now let's get it started. A mechatronics degree is somewhat of a peculiar degree. You learn a bit of software and a bit of hardware, but mainly you learn how to design integrated systems. This includes things like drones, assembly line automation, and home security systems. This degree lets you make basically anything you want in the modern day since electronics are so commonplace now. So once you've sat through thousands of hours of class, taken hundreds of exams, sat through many labs and done some projects on your own, what can you do with all these newfound talents? Where should you start looking for a job? The first and most obvious answer to this question is to try and get a job directly related to your field. If you were to look up mechatronics engineering jobs, you would notice that mechatronics engineers often work on autonomous vehicles, designing parts for medical device companies and car manufacturers. They also often work on robotics control systems relating to manufacturing, and they work on products that help companies automate tasks and improve logistics using AI. There are many more examples such as product design, circuit design, and process controls, just to name a few. You'll notice that some of the jobs I mentioned are more traditional, like doing CAD or engineering design. But there are some others like robotics and automation that are a little bit more modern. However, all of these jobs have the same title, mechatronics engineer. So it's up to you to decide what type of company most interests you and what type of work you want to do within the mechatronics field. You'll also notice looking through job postings that companies will often put mechatronics slash mechanical engineer in their job title and these jobs are more likely to be CAD related and more traditionally mechanical engineering jobs. But companies are beginning to evolve and they're requiring more automation. So sometimes having a mechatronics engineer on board can be more beneficial than having a mechanical engineer. In the same way as I just mentioned, some companies will put mechatronics slash software engineer. And as you might guess, these jobs are more software heavy, but they often involve working with hardware and electrical components alongside the software development that you'll be doing. The last thing you might see is software slash robotics engineer. This is essentially in the same category Category as the last one, except you'll be doing more automation and more tasks related directly to robotics. So from this, I'm sure that you can tell that you have a lot of options, but there are even more. If you go on LinkedIn and you look at mechatronics engineers that are currently studying or recently graduated, you will notice that a lot of them are working in big tech companies or in purely software related roles. There is quite a bit of software content in a mechatronics degree, but that's not usually how these people got their jobs. A lot of big tech companies don't care if you have a degree at all. As long as you have the skills for the job and you can show them in an interview that you have the skills for the job, you might very well get that job. Most of the people who have a mechatronics degree working in software did a lot of work outside of the classroom working on projects and going to hackathons to prove themselves. The next most common thing you might see on LinkedIn is mechatronics engineers working in purely mechanical roles. The explanation here is basically the same as before. These engineers are generally very interested in this particular job. They joined a team, they learned a lot about cars, drivetrains, engines, and they decided that they want to work for a mechanical engineering company. However, having the mechatronics skill set is currently in very high demand with many companies needing more automation and AI. This wider array of knowledge can allow you to become a stronger asset for companies that are more traditionally mechanical or software focused. Okay, now let's talk about money because I'm sure you're all extremely curious to know what the possibilities are. The easy answer to that question is whatever you can convince your employer to pay you. But I know that's not what you came to hear, so let me break it down. Generally speaking, the highest paying jobs that you can get right now as an engineer are software jobs. So if you're a mechatronics engineer and all you want to do is make the absolute most money, work on developing your software skills outside of the classroom and begin applying to software jobs. For example, Facebook's starting salary for a software engineer is now somewhere in the range of $130,000. However, the catch is there's an extremely high cost of living in cities like San Francisco and New York where Facebook is headquartered. So be sure to take that into consideration as well. 
The next highest paying jobs would be in robotics, automation, AI, and self-driving. These roles have a lot of software and tech involved in them and can often command very high salaries as well. Depending on location, you can be looking at a similar starting salary to Facebook, but you're more likely to start somewhere in the range of $70,000 to $80,000. And last but definitely not least is mechanical engineering jobs. I think that the reason that these salaries are lower is because car manufacturers often have their facilities in places where the cost of living isn't too high. You can likely expect a starting salary of between sixty dollars to $70,000. Just because this has the lowest starting salary doesn't mean it's the worst job by any means. These jobs are often very stable, give you good benefits, and you only have to work 9 to 5. But with software and robotics jobs on the other hand, you'll often be pulling way longer hours than that trying to push out that new code. So it's up to you to decide what's most important to you. With all of these jobs, there is a lot of room to grow. If you get into a management role, you're likely going to be making well over six figures, and sometimes in tech companies you can even make seven figures or more. However, as with anything, there is a downside. Employers will often be looking for very specific skills, and sometimes, depending on your mechatronics degree, you might not learn those skills in school. So that means if you want to work for this particular company, you have to find a way to learn that skill on your own time and throw it onto your resume. Most of the time, if you only have half the skills listed on a job posting, you should still apply. Make yourself look as good as possible on your resume. Try to find a way to showcase that you have the ability to learn the things that they need you to know. Lastly, if you really liked being in school and you want to learn even more about the field of mechatronics, there are tons of great master's programs out there around the world. Even if you're in a different engineering undergrad, you can often take mechatronics engineering as a master's at most schools. Getting a master's degree will often increase your base salary by ten dollars to $20,000. So if you're willing to do another two years of school and you've done the cost-benefit analysis, getting a master's degree is definitely a good idea. If you want to get a professional engineer designation, getting a master's degree can often speed up that process by two years. And the last thing I'll say is that since an engineering undergrad can often be extremely difficult and time consuming, this is one of the best degrees to get a job in any field. I know engineers who chose to be teachers, investment bankers, or consultants just because that's what they were interested in. Doing an engineering degree like this often means that you can learn all the skills that you need for any job very quickly. Let me know if you found this video useful by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I love to hear your feedback and ideas in the comments down below, so be sure to leave me a comment about what I should make next. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.